Hello guys, you alright? Welcome to the channel, Shore Fisherman UK. This will be my first video of 2021 where we're going to do some scratching for small fish with mackerel feathers and squid. Chuck out a couple of live baits and throw some lures around. You're going to see some awkward outtakes because it's my first video. But like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for future, future notifications. That's, that's crap. That's so bad. Wait, I'll start again. We'll just crop that out. So I've run into a bit of a problem. Um, I was hoping to use squid today because um, I've got a method of baiting it up. You don't need any bait elastic and it stays on there for quite a while. It's like minus one. I've poured a bit of my water onto the squid to try and defrost it a bit and I've just turned it into a block of frozen ice. So I'm going to have a little think about how best to tackle this situation and hopefully I can get back to you and get a little tutorial on how I put the squid on with no bait elastic and then um, get one out in the water but for now I'm probably going to have to use mackerel because that is a bait that I can chop up when it's frozen. So guys. I um I've come up with a solution on how to warm up my baits enough just to get them in the water and what I'm gonna do with this mackerel because it's so frozen stiff there ain't really much I can do with it right now and I was thinking what I'll do is I'll stick him down my trousers for a bit right in my boxers and um after about five minutes he should be warm enough to chop up and throw a nice bait out with him and Gonna to attempt to chop this now. Um, figured I'd record it for you guys because the chances are I'm probably gonna chop my fingers off. Don't really like cutting up. I mean, this isn't just frozen, this is rock solid, so not an easy thing to cut. And my hands are so cold, I can't even feel my fingers. But I wanna get a bait in the water. It's, um, it's about two hours before high tide, the water's really clear. Might be a chance of a bass, maybe a conger. Yeah, let's see how this goes. I like to fillet it from the back. A lot of people will fillet it from the front. It doesn't make a difference. You get a fillet off, the fillet's off. Go down. And then flat against the bone. I'm not recommending that other people cut mackerel that this, that's this frozen either. I, I really wouldn't do it it's not worth it wait till it's defrosted a little bit and then chop it up ow There we go, I'll be back in a minute. I'll put that on a hook and show you how to do it. I haven't really used any mackerel bait last year. I, I caught most of my fish on squid. I was using a lot of squid for bass. I didn't really target anything else other than bass. I went crazy last year, I learned a lot. Um, I'd definitely say I got a lot of information, a lot of tips and tricks. Um, my locations, I'm not gonna be hiding them unless there's some sort of top secret bass spot. Um, fish are gen generally everywhere. Um, I mean, today I'm fishing Peace Haven, I'm fishing the reef. Um, sort of, um, you can fish it from Salt Dean all the way up to New Haven West Beach, I think it's the same reef. If you catch bass on one mark, you're gonna catch bass 100 yards away, um, even half a mile away, they're still gonna be there. Um, the, weather's, the weather's right, your fishing will be good. Um, yeah, and that's lots of stuff, lots of tips and tricks, lots of locations, 
um, different weathers, what sort of fish you can expect, different fishing techniques, um, different ways to bait up, squid without bait elastic, squid with. Um, the only time I can really bait up mackerel when I don't use bait elastic is on a small hook, but when I'm using a big bait I like to I like to clamp it down. There's lots of crabs on the reef as well and lots of little pout and white in that will nip at it and just pull it apart if you don't use bait elastic, so it's better to put as much on as you can. Your bait will be on there for a while, the fish don't really notice it and um, it's all around just better to have it on there. So I'll start with me. This is pretty frozen so it might go wrong. It's got a little bit, it's actually warmer than my fingers are which is nice, just holding this mackerel's warming me up, even though it's frozen. I'll go through the top, as far as I can go about breaking it, pull it through. I normally would have trimmed this little tag end off just to stop it pulling the bait apart when I push it through, but it should be okay today. Hold it, spin the hook and pull it at the same time, that'll stop it breaking. See, I've just got a nice smooth little hole there now. If the bait was not as frozen as it was now, I'd normally go through this side, out from here, and then the same again through that side, out from there, and then go through once again, and then come out in the middle, and then I'd come down here, spin the hook and put it through, but because of the um, because of the weather, the bait won't defrost, um, and I feel like doing that is just going to pull this mackerel fillet apart, so all I'm, all I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to go through the bottom here, Spin the hook through, push it down nice and tight. This is quite a big bait as well. Um, I tend to fish big baits on the reef because there are some big things here. I've had some decent sized bass, I've had some nice congas. All you want to do now is grab that bottom, the circle of the hook, the ring, and then just squeeze that down really tight and just wrap some bait elastic around that. That'll, that'll stop your hook spinning around in the bait. And then just start by going around the whole thing, hold the shank of the hook down nice and tight. You guys can use much smaller baits if you want. This is a whole mackerel fillet with a 6-0. Um, some people like to use a pulley panel, so, or just a panel on any rig really. That'll give you an extra hook at the top. Maybe, might give you a better chance of a fish, but when you're fishing over rough ground, um, the less spiky stuff you've got by your bait, the better to be honest. Just get right to that end bit now. But I don't tie my bait elastic in a knot, I just pull it tight and snap it. That'll do the job. That's ready to go. Guys, I'm gonna stick a running ledger rig on this. I tend to catch most of my stuff on this rig. Bass, congas, the unwanted dogfish, um, whiting if that's your thing. And it to be fair, it's one of the quickest rigs I can snap off on the reef when I do my fishing at low tide when it's rough. And within a couple of minutes, I've got another rig on. I've got a fresh bait in the sea. Um, you can use whatever size hook length you want, but I normally go for about five foot. So I'll just make that now. You can see the whole process and how long it takes to do it. So you start with, you don't have to use these. You can use any sort of clip that you want but these tend to slide down the line a little bit smoother and 
do a little bit less damage. You want one of those on to start with. I'm using 30 pound line straight through because I'm fishing the reef. Got no shock lead or anything on. The less knots, I sort of tend to find it's better to have less knots. Uh, you want a bead, doesn't matter on the colour, fish don't know. Put your bead on, barrel swivel. These little organisation boxes are really good as well, especially if you're fishing over rough ground. I tie that on, I just use a fisherman's knot. I've been using it all my life, I don't know any other knots, so this is the one. Go around eight, seven or eight times. Wet it. Put it through the little hole. And then just pull it tight. Make sure you put it really tight. That's that. You put that away now, you're done with this. That just clips up. That's done. Now we want some, this is 50 pound nylon. This is what I use for my hook lamps. So I go from about arm to arm, it's normally about enough. Put it back through there so it's ready to use again in a little bit and then just cut it. There you go. Same again. Another fisherman's knot. Just get that little bit out of the way. It's so cold. I normally tie a lot faster than this. Right, eight, seven or eight times again. You can use a pulley panel on the reef, it's a similar, similar setup. The main thing I like about the running ledger is it pulls the weight straight up to the top. And um, then you're only really fighting a fish, you're not fighting the weight in the reef as well. It can lose you a lot of a lot of fish. You also can use um, like a rotten bottom bottom rig. So where the weight goes on this little barrel swivel, I'll show you in a minute, you can put a piece of maybe 15 or 10 pound line and tie a knot in it and then put your weight there. That'll, um, that'll snap really easy if you, get, um, if you get a fish on and you end up in a snag, you can just pull it out, the fish will still be there and, and your, um, your weight will be gone. And then that's it, and then you just trim the fat when you're done, if you want to. Not really much weed around today, so I probably won't bother. Pull that, that's about as tight as I can get it. My hands are so cold, that line's probably just gonna go straight through me. Sometimes I just pull it into my teeth. And then that's that, and then we'll get a weight and stick a, probably a five ounce lead. I don't really use light leads, even if it is calm. There you go, five ounce. I, know, I, I do use grippers a lot on the reef because um, a lot of people seem to think that there's this um, there's this theory behind using these rolling barrel um, leads will cause you not to snag up because it's got no grips on it. But that's actually, I believe that to be false. When you're using one of these in certain conditions, it's going to roll around a lot and that's going to cause your hook and your, your trace and everything else that's down there also to roll around and pull you into snags and crevices and places where you don't want to be. So um, normally I would use a grip lead, five or six ounce grip lead, and that will hold your bait there all day long. Um, and it usually won't move until you pull it or a fish takes it. Today it's quite calm, it's northerly. Hopefully the water's nice and clear for later on. I'm gonna try and chuck some surface lures about. I might use some um, some minnows and some shads as well, see if I can pick anything up on one of these. A mate of mine caught a caught a wrass in a rock pool down here the other day, so might be interesting to see if we can get something. But just for today, I think we'll um try for a bass. Quite unlikely, I'm not expecting results. Um, we're gonna try and get some whiting to use as live bait and some pout if there is any. We'll chuck those out, show you how, show you how to do that if the time comes. Now that's that, that is, that 
that's the rig. That's all we need to do to make a running ledger rig. It's that simple. Swivel, bead, sorry. Um, slider, bead, swivel, maybe five foot, 50 pound, 30 pound, 40 pound, it's up to you. And then I'm using a 6 0 Aberdeen. Makes baiting up a squid a lot easier. I'll show you how to do that in a minute as well. Straight through the top, like that. Come out. Pull it through and twist it at the same time. This is going to stop you from absolutely destroying the bait when you pull the shank of the hook through. And then what you want to do is go through sideways twice. Once that way. Pull it through. Remember to twist it as you're pulling it through. Get a good bit of line through that. And then, as I said, through the other way again. So that's your second time you've gone through. Now you're going to go through once more and this is just to straighten up, make sure everything's exactly where it's supposed to be. You want to come halfway, come straight out the middle like that. What that's going to do is that's going to line up the line of the rig straight to where, towards where your hook's going to be. It's going to keep things nice and straight. Get your hook through the body just near the head. Get the sharp piece of the hook straight out through the head like this. Looks like that, pull it tight, make a loop around the top, pull that tight, do two or three loops, and that's it, you're done. Once you've got your loops right and you don't hook yourself. That's free. And that's it. That will sit in the water nice, hooks exposed, not going anywhere, perfect bait. So, so we came down today with the aim on just doing a general bit of scratching and chucking out some big baits, a bit of lure fishing. And um, I wasn't 100% sure whether or not I should upload this video because I haven't caught anything, but I thought like I should give my viewers a realistic view on fishing. It's not all sunshine and rainbows. You're not going to catch fish every day. I mean, you can. It's, it's, it's rare. So just want to... I'm going to upload this. I'm going to upload all the videos I do. I'm going to show you guys the amount of effort I put in to catch what I catch. And it'll be a much more realistic sort of view on how fishing really is rather than a video every day of me catching something because it's not like that. So I'll upload this. These baits have been out for about a bit long actually because my hands have been really cold. I really don't want to touch the bait. But these have been out for about an hour and 20 minutes which is too long. About 20 minutes, 30 minutes of pop on the reef. Um, I'm fishing over rough ground. I'm going to show you what I would do now to sort of make sure, get my gear back. Um, yeah, pick up your rod, obviously. Wind down until you feel pressure on the tip. That means you're connected directly to your weight. Now bring the rod down as much as you can. When you lift up, you're gonna lift up as fast and as high as you can, and then you're gonna wind super fast, bringing your weight and everything in your rig all the way up to the top of the water so you can get it back safe, so. That's it. You see that? I like to keep it skimming across the top. Now the water clarity kind of tells me today that my baits are going to keep coming back untouched. But it might be good for lures at low tide. That's a bait that um, 
nothing's gone there. Do you know what? I'm not going to put another bait on, I'm just going to throw that straight back out. I'm using a 14 foot uh, Gravel Vertex Sky Surfer. Uh, 14 foot, I think it's just over 14 actually. But it's got a really good action, really good cast on it. You can get some really good distance on this rod. That's it, straight in the rod stand. Let's give you a little peek. What sort of ground we're fishing. Don't know if you can, you should, I can see straight to the bottom. I think you guys will too. The quality of the camera should be all right. But it's basically just one big rock, one big white piece of chalk. Stretches from Salt Dean to New Haven West Beach. Loads of gullies down it. Loads of seaweed, kelp all on the top. Um, I fish a lot at low tide. I don't normally fish high tide here. It's quite a, it's not a very deep tide today, not a big tide. But um, at low tide, you'll see this goes all the way out and you can get onto the reef. No, I wear, um, I wear special light equipment like crampons and stuff which have got spikes put spikes on my shoes so I don't slip over all the time um, you've got to be careful on the reef when you're especially if you're on your own there's a lot of gullies that are deep enough for a person to fall all the way down into and you're you're, you're looking at an, an eight foot maybe a nine foot drop um, with a gully that's about a foot wide you'd fall down it getting back out I don't think you'd wedge yourself in it the tide will be coming in so um yeah make sure you take a friend with you or something until you're really confident that you're not going to be falling down any gullies or Hi guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Unfortunately, I did have some drone footage which I took. Spent quite a lot of time taking it, but someone had written on the previous day some pretty profound stuff on the ledge that I'm not willing to put on YouTube because it's not friendly for children or even adults. It's not a very nice thing to be reading. So um, unfortunately, I can't upload any of the drone footage. Hopefully next time I'll have a look at the background and stuff around me before I upload. So, cheers, take care.